Last week, I tore down a giant six and three quarter liter V8 out of an 80s Bentley. And well, I'm still feeling it, still recovering. So for this week, I wanted to choose something easier that wouldn't take as much time. And I apologize if this is a short teardown, they kind of balance each other out. So for this week, I decided to tear down half of an engine. It's a, it's a joke. This is a complete engine. This is the B38 1.5 liter three cylinder BMW engine. This comes in several different BMWs and Mini Coopers. This particular version is likely out of a Mini Cooper. It's out of a 19. It could have come from a 228 Active Tour. But the reason I said this is half of an engine is not making fun of it. This is literally the same design as the B48, which is the four cylinder version which is also the same design as the B58, which is the six cylinder version. And why this isn't called the B29, I'll never understand. And that is also a joke. So this makes 134 horsepower, but they did make them making 100 horsepower. And there's also a version that makes 200 and about 230 horsepower in the i8, which is a lot of power out of a small package. It's pretty impressive. And I, I don't have anything really bad to say about these other than they're expensive and I don't know why. So maybe today we'll find out. There are many factors that determine the price of a used engine. Essentially, it's what the market will bear. What will people pay for a used engine with a warranty from a licensed recycler? And the biggest factor for that is demand. How many people need it? And the opposite factor is how many are out there? What's the supply? And in this case, there aren't that many of them out there. And if there wasn't the demand, these wouldn't be nearly $1,000 a cylinder. Yes, these are $2,500 to $3,000 with average miles. That is expensive to me. I, I understand that may not be a lot of money for a late model car, but compare this to say a Nissan Versa. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but those engines are very cheap because nobody needs them and they're plentiful every yard in town can get one for just a few hundred bucks so when this is three thousand dollars i know you want to say it's a bmw it's going to be expensive there are cheap bmw engines go buy a 2.5 liter m54 because they're plentiful and not a lot of people need them in this case apparently there's demand now you might also wonder why is this sitting on my table why is this not on an engine stand well haha <laughs> i am glad you asked that is the bell housing of the engine and is also where the timing chain lies. So if I mount this side of the engine to the stand, I can't get the timing apart, which means I can't get the engine apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on this side of the engine and we're going to take this stuff apart and then I have to figure out how to mount this to the stand. It's, it's going to be okay. I fine is the word I'm looking for. This is the part of the video where we see if the engine turns over, which is exactly what we're going to do. And I, I know what you're thinking. Eric, that engine is not stable on that table. Something bad is going to happen. Well, you know what? It's going to be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Ugh. See, it's fine. It doesn't seem to have a lot of resistance. Oh, there's some resistance. That's compression. I don't need to hold it. Wait a minute. That's bad. That's not supposed to happen. I can almost turn this over by hand with compression. So uh, this is one of those variable belt drive systems. If they replace the engine for this, I will be totally shocked. There's no way they did that. Next, I need to pull the plugs. Look, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Well, the plugs don't really look too bad. A little bit of a gap, but not terrible. No signs of damage yet. Next, let's remove the crank pulley. Come on now. Nope, let's get some more force. That seems bad to me. Or is that normal? That can't be normal. Next, we'll take this cover off. Aw, is that it? That goes into the, the block. Blue. Ooh, neat stuff. So this looks like uh, an oil scavenge pump, maybe? 
Or maybe as part of the balance shaft. I think it's probably a balance shaft. First time working on one of these. Let's take this off and see what happens. <coughs> Apparently, nothing. This is actually a two-piece gear. That's not doing anything. Okay, so we're just gonna leave it and deal with it later. Next, we'll unbolt the oil feed line. And now the oil return. Something's got to give. Maybe we'll deal with that when we're trying to yank the turbo off the engine. It's kind of slick here. These uh, turbos just wedge themselves in this bottom bracket and bolt at the top. And look at that, oil feed is removed. So the turbo looks pretty decent, but it is pretty wet in here. The um, exhaust wheel doesn't make contact with the housing and it spins pretty nice. I can't really see the compressor side of the turbo based on the inlet and the outlet. Next up, the water pump. Yeah, like I was just gonna be able to pull that off. Oh, I broke it. So look at this thing. Spins nice, no bearing noise, no play. Plastic impeller, pretty classic BMW. Seal looks good. This is an excellent condition water pump. seen it. I know it's over here. Where is it? It's not his to take. Perfect. You gotta be kidding me. We're not going through this again. I'm not doing this again. I don't care. To do it? To not do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's probably gonna die. At this point, I think it's stripped enough that I can try to get this thing on my stand. You can see a boss here, a boss here, one there, all the way up here, there's one back there. This is going to be fun! And I'm not going to film it because, quite frankly, it'll be boring. So that was a lot of fun. Let me show you the engineering I had to go through to get this on the stand. So there's the first bolt. There's the second bolt. And it's got two bolts in it. So the way I look at this is I've had 600 pound engines on the stand and I use four bolts. So this engine's about 180, maybe 200 pounds as you see it. And there's two bolts. So the weight per bolt is actually lower than one of those 600 pound engines. Yeah, engineer. So now that it's on the stand, let's take a look down the intake ports. So those don't have a ton of carbon. I don't really see anything wrong other than my camera. There we go. Focusing. And there's not much to see in the, ooh, that one's wet. Okay, there is some to see. And that one's dry. So this center one may have a problem. Another thing to mention is the Valvetronic motor is smashed. These engines don't necessarily get treated that well, which means a lot of the exterior parts end up looking like this. Next, we'll get the fuel lines off. These are tiny E6s. And the high pressure fuel pump. Well, the oil looks decent. Next, we'll unbolt the fuel rail. We didn't need that. So now these unbolt from the injectors, but I don't know if the injectors actually have any hold down hardware. So the valve cover is already damaged, so I, I, I understand this is risky. So this moves with the injectors, which tells me that there's no hardware to hold these down other than what we see here. So we're gonna just, I'm just gonna try a little bit. 
I'm not going to go too crazy. I don't think I'm going to be able to go crazy at all. Whoa. Would you look at that? That's only half the battle, though. Or is it two-thirds the battle? I have an idea. This, it worked. It worked! There are the injectors and the rail. That really wasn't bad. Next, we'll pull the valve cover. Will this just lift up? No. Oh, we're about there. Wow. That's sparkly inside and not the bad kind. So everything looks really clean in here. Like it's, it's exceptionally clean. Uh, I see a couple of things of concern, but nothing terribly alarming. All the Valvetronic system seems to be intact. I don't think this engine had very many miles on it. The valve train looks really good, but if you notice, there's a couple marks on the rollers. They're not terrible, but for as clean as this engine is on the inside, that is kind of concerning. Another thing you may have noticed is that the oil filter housing, this plastic housing is broken, probably from the lack of care, but thankfully we have a filter to look at and it's beautiful. It looks brand new. I don't see any metal slivers. I don't see any cause for concern. The next thing I want to do is peel the timing cover off and I think I can get this off. It does sandwich between the head and the oil pan and worst case we have to pull the pan, but I, I'm still going to try. There's a couple bolts here from the head and a couple bolts here from the oil pan. All the bolts are out of the timing cover. Let's see if we can get this off. Except for this bolt. Didn't take that bolt out. Now all the bolts are out. I think we have a better chance now that the bolts are out. I don't know. Looks like we got a place to pry here. So the timing cover looks pretty decent. The timing system is actually pretty simple. You've got one chain, two chains. I mean, it's not a Bugatti, but there's not much here. This is not just an idler. This actually changes the ratio. As you can see, the two gears are a different size. You got your tensioner here, and this chain drives the cams. So we're gonna pull this bolt out and this bolt out. Your tensioner is over here. We'll get that out, see if we can pull the upper cassette because I don't have the tool to get the cam gears off and then we'll worry about this other stuff later. First, the tensioner. Screw this. Well, the oil in this thing is beautiful. Tensioner looks good. Next, we'll remove these two T45s. That one was kind of loose. And then two bolts here. This rail is pretty decent. Oh, 08 of 18, that checks out. Just a little bit of wear where you can see the chain was riding. It's nice. There's a sneaky little T45 right here. Now, let's see, this should come up. Now, that rail is just, it's perfect. It's like brand new. Can we get this off enough? I don't know, guys. I think I'm missing a step. I feel like I need to take that off, but that, I don't want to mess with this chain yet, but I guess I could. I don't want to. Maybe it comes off of this. No, certainly not. Can I get this guy out? This is seeming like a terrible idea. 
No, it does not come out. Or does it? It does come out. Yes. That thing looks nice. Look how clean that is. And then now I can get the chain off. And I can get the chain off. Well, you will. What kind of Rubik's Cube is this chain? Yeah, look at that. It's fresh. The design of this cylinder head actually lends itself to being able to pull the head complete. And I didn't see any metal in the filter, which leads me to believe that the journals are going to be nice, but we are still going to check this exhaust cam. I don't really want to pull the Valvetronic apart, but I will check on the exhaust cam. One thing I am going to have to do is remove this trigger wheel so that I have access to that bolt down yonder. Let's cram these caps loose. Whoops, dropped the uh, roller lifter for the fuel pump. We'll get that out later. It does not want to let go. This may not come off of here. It might, it might actually be the cam gear that's keeping this in. I just can't imagine. I mean, I could imagine. In which case, why does the cam gear not also lift out with it? Well, I, I, I'm, I might have to concede I definitely don't want to break this. Yeah, it is the cam gear. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, I'm not willing to risk it. I'm not going to sit here and pry something apart, and I don't have the tool to get the cam gear off. That's unfortunate. We can, however, still get a good look at the journals on the cams, and they look pretty good. So I, I'm pretty convinced that we're not really missing anything underneath that cap. The caps really don't have any damage either. A little bit of, of scratches, it's really not that bad. There are two more bolts that I need to take out and I did run those caps back down. I didn't tighten anything too crazy, but we're gonna get these out first. Next, this little trigger wheel, it is pinned, so it can only go on one way. Well, I already ran into a snag. So I don't have a 3 8 drive T60 here, which is what the head bolts are. And my half inch does not fit between this cap and the head casting. So I'm going to try to remove this cap. I don't think this is going to work. If it doesn't, I might have to do some sketchy stuff. It's hopefully fine. Oh, please come off. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, that's not going to work anyway because this ledge is on the bottom of the cam and I'd have to pull the cam out which means I have to pull the Valvetronic apart. Nope. We're going to do some sketchy stuff. I'm going to get these back in. What do you think the over under is of this engine making a mess on my floor when I tilt it? It's fine. All right, so we're going to lock it in that spot. It'll just make it easier to get the head bolts out. Now we'll get the head bolts out and I'm going to use a T60 on all of these head bolts except for that one. We're going to use a T55. It's going to be fine, I think. Well, that didn't make a peep. Hopefully it works. It's either going to work or it's not. Yes. Don't work on your cars like this, please. Normally I'd use the air impact for this, but I gotta be careful here because of the proximity to cams and head surface. So we're just gonna use my electric one. It's gonna be okay, I think. Just a little more effort. All right, now I'm gonna rotate the engine up so I can lift the head. I think that's it. This head should lift right off. Head gasket looks okay. I don't see any problems. Now I don't suspect we're going to find any problems, but 
For the sake of consistency, let's do our test. That's kind of fun. Do all these get to the top? That one does. Oh, now I broke it. Nope, just kidding. That one does. They all do, so I don't think we have any bent rods. So I combed this head over pretty well. I don't see anything wrong. This cylinder's a little wet, but it's, it's not like an obvious smoking gun. The boards don't look too bad. They all seem to have that weird X pattern. Well, at least that one does. I don't know if that's an indicator of a problem or not. So I don't see any issues with the pistons. It looks good. I'm scratching my head here, folks. Next, I need to remove the chain tensioner. And if I remember right, these are under pressure. So I decided that safety comes first. I am totally protected. Hold on. Didn't feel a thing. Now we'll get the three bolts holding these rails in place. That one's decent. That one in the pan, it's fine. We'll get it out later. That one looks good too. Now I don't think that's enough slack here to get this off. So I need to remove that bolt right there. That did it. That's just gonna hang out all loosey-goosey. Let's roll this over and see if it makes a mess. I'm gonna go with likely. Not a ton. That's excellent. Next, we'll unbolt the oil pan. That was violent. What kind of drain plug apparatus is this? That's not factory. I think that's the second one of the second engine I've gotten in with one of these weird drain plugs. That's not not sufficient. But the pan looks good. Look how clean that is. A little bit of debris in the bottom, but nothing nothing really terrible at all. All the pickup is nice and clean. This all looks great. I, I feel like I'm tearing down a good engine. It and I don't like it. Now we need to see if we can get this loose. I doubt it, I doubt, I bet it's just gonna turn the engine over. Oh yeah. You can see that balance shaft spinning right there. That's the weight of a whole other, so I'm just kidding. I have an idea. This might be my worst one yet. Now I thought it was just going to turn it, but it's just going to destroy my bit. So we need to figure out another way to get this chain off. Let me see if I can just unbolt the oil pump. That might work. All right, I can't do this. Let's try this again. Oh yes, we'll get, we got this. I think we have this. Yeah. Let me get that chain off and that chain, beautiful. I think it's good. Yeah, I'm not taking this apart. Uh, I'm not gonna play with it any longer. I don't see any reason why this would be bad because we didn't find any metal anywhere that it would have been if this had any problems. Get this out of the way real quick. And there's the rotating assembly. At this point, I'm just gonna unbolt the rod caps so that we can get the rods and pistons out.
let's push these pistons out of their home. Ooh, that didn't want to come all the way out. What gives? There is a bit of a bridge at the top. I just need a little help. Now let's pull the crank. Pretty easy. Let's go weigh this thing. 26 pounds. Let's start with the rod bearings. They're perfect. Literally perfect. No damage at all. And the rods and pistons. The rods look good. Pistons have a little bit of skirt wear. And I think this is going to be the culprit here. Look at the amount of carbon around the rings and the ring lands. I bet this thing was burning oil, which is, it's crazy. If, if you just clean all that out, which you, you can't do with the engine in the car, if you could just clean all that out, this thing might've run fine, or maybe the rings are worn. But either way, this is the only thing that I can see that could potentially cause this engine to quote unquote, be bad. That's a lot of carbon. We don't really see pistons that look like that this often. Yeah, they're ugly. But I don't really see any damage. Maybe this was a case where, we'll see these rings are kind of, yeah, this one's stuck. Well, nope, they're not. They move. I still think this thing is probably burning some oil, just judging by the way the plugs looked and the way the pistons look. There's really hardly a reason to call an engine bad, but I feel like we're gonna see that as time goes on. The crankshaft, it's beautiful. Now I'm not sure if this has any value, but if it does follow the same trends as other B-series, BMW, B-series is a Honda thing, other B engines that BMW made, then the crank will be, it will be valuable. Main bearings have a little wear. They still look really nice. The one thing I couldn't get out is the balance shaft. And I mean, maybe I could, but I really don't want to damage anything. I think this block will have some value and I, I don't want to devalue it by trying to get this out when ultimately whoever I sell this to will likely need the balance shaft. You know, the block paints a slightly different picture. There's some vertical wear. And they are pretty glazed. Especially for such a new engine. I wouldn't expect this to have a ton of miles. And cross hatching is still very visible. I mean they're not they're not bad. They're just not as nice as you would expect. That one being the worst. The only real thing I saw wrong with this engine was that it could have been burning some oil. The pistons were the only giveaway. Well, I guess the plugs too, but for the most part, it didn't look that bad. And I think we're gonna see this as a trend, hopefully not on the channel, because I don't like to be in the habit of tearing down engines that aren't bad. I'm not gonna say this ran perfect, I don't know that. And even when I get to a point where I think everything else is good, I still tear these engines all the way down, unless it's something crazy like the Porsche M96. Mainly because I don't know until it's completely apart. I like to know everything about these parts, and then I feel good about selling them as loose parts. You can see them in the video. There's no hidden surprises. But this engine, no smoking gun. Maybe it burned some oil. Maybe it was a good engine. I, People make mistakes. It could have run weird or maybe had some other issues unrelated to the engine. Maybe it was the crank pulley, unless it's supposed to do that. I can't imagine that being the case. But if they replace that engine because of the crank pulley, mm, I just don't even want to, that, I, I don't love that. But 
this was fun. This was cool to see half of a B58. There's a few things that were different because it was a three cylinder and not a four or a six cylinder like the balance shaft, but it was cool. I, I, I kind of like it, but I do like a lot of the B at BMW engines, the B38, the B48, and the B58. I think those are solid engines. I think BMW learned a lot from their mistakes from the previous generation of engines, but if you want to buy parts out of this, Lots of good parts available. I have no idea what any of it's worth. I don't know if it's going to be too expensive for desk ornaments. I have no idea. This is the first one of these I've had my hands on ever. So if you'd like to buy parts out of this engine or anything else I've torn down or out of this beautiful SC300, it's wrecked. This side looks, that side looks good. Not so much over here. I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our parts cars every single week. This one was a whole lot easier than last week, and I'm going to get some good rest tonight. I really hope you enjoy this teardown as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.